CD1. Reading and Vocabulary Series 4 Concepts and Comments, 3rd Edition by Patricia Ackert and Linda Lee. Copyright 2006. Published by Heinle, a division of Thompson Learning. All rights reserved. Unit 1, Art. Unit 1, Lesson 1, Navajo Sand Painting. More than 500 years ago, the ancestors of the Navajo people left the cold northern region that is now part of western Canada and Alaska and migrated south to what is now the southwestern part of the United States. The area in which the Navajo finally settled is mainly desert. It is a harsh environment that gets little rain. The animals and plants that live there have had to adapt in order to survive in the unforgiving climate and landscape. When the Navajos arrived in the area, they too had to adapt to the harsh desert conditions in order to survive. They had to learn to make use of the natural resources in their environment to provide for their shelter, food, and other necessities. Over time, the Navajo became famous for the things they were able to create from the natural resources at hand. One of the most famous Navajo creations is called sand painting. Most people think of a painting as a work of art. For the Navajo, however, sand painting is not artwork. Rather, sand painting is an important part of a religious ceremony. The making of a sand painting is part of a healing ceremony that is supposed to restore the health and well-being of a sick person. The only people who are allowed to create sand paintings are specially trained Navajo singers or medicine men and their assistants. A Navajo singer begins the process of creating a sand painting by collecting different rocks. The rocks are then crushed and ground into sand. Traditionally, a Navajo singer and his assistants make the sand painting on the floor of a small Navajo house called a hogan. Working under the direction of the singer, the assistants take colored sand in their hands and drip it on the floor in a line. Using different colors, they slowly make a picture. The size of Navajo sand paintings varies. A small sand painting is less than a meter wide, while a large sand painting can be over six meters wide. The number of people assisting the singer also varies. A small sand painting may have two or three people working on it and take an hour to complete while a large painting may require ten men and women and take all day to finish. During the healing ceremony, the sick person moves on to the completed sand painting. The sick person sits directly on the sand painting so that it can serve as a pathway for evil or illness to leave the person's body and for goodness or health to return to it. This explains why the Navajo word for sand painting means place where the gods come and go. After the sick person has been treated, other visitors may go up to the painting and dab some of the sand on themselves so that the sand painting brings health and well-being into their lives too. At the end of the healing ceremony, it is imperative that the sand painting be destroyed. The Navajo believe that something terrible will happen if they fail to destroy a sand painting properly. So, In the reverse of the order in which it was made, the singer sweeps the painting away and returns the sand to the landscape. Navajo singers make their sand paintings from memory, and they always make the same pictures in exactly the same way. There are between 600 and 1,000 different pictures for sand paintings. At one point in history, there was one singer for every 150 Navajos, Today, the ratio is much lower, with one singer for roughly every 2,200 people. One reason for this change is the extensive training required to perform the duties of a singer. It can take as long as 14 years to train someone. A second reason for the change in ratio is that a singer can train only one student at a time. This need for one-on-one training has limited the number of students who can be trained. 
While a true sand painting is part of a Navajo ceremony and lasts for only a short time, sand painting as a permanent art form has also developed. The first permanent sand paintings appeared in the early 1900s. These early pieces of art were actually tapestries rather than paintings made with sand. The tapestries were woven by a respected Navajo singer named Hostine Claw, who copied the pictures from sand paintings. However, to avoid causing something terrible to happen by making a permanent picture, Claw never made the picture exactly the same as the original. He would not use a Navajo picture without changing it a little. Before long, tourists in the area saw Claw's weavings and asked to buy them. Claw finally agreed to sell one of his weavings if the buyer promised never to put it on the floor or walk on it. In the 1930s, the Navajo began creating another type of permanent sand painting. They made these permanent paintings by slowly dripping colored sand onto glue-covered boards. Today, these sand paintings are considered to be works of art rather than part of a religious ceremony. They are made by artists rather than singers, and they appear in art shows and in art museums. There is still controversy over the selling of sand paintings. Some Navajos say that sand paintings are part of their religion and should not be sold. But others believe that the artist's changes to the pictures protect their religious power.